That's our next guest. Book Shambi joins us. <clears throat> he is the voice of ESPN Radio's Sunday Night Baseball, the play-by-play voice of the Cubs on the TV side. What's up, Book? What's up, y'all? How you guys doing? What's up, What'd man? you make of the uh, Wemby first pitch? <clears throat> I mean, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> it kind of went the way you you thought it would go. Right. You know, it was, you're, I was trying to, I was trying to find the baseball in his hand. Yeah, right. Like, it, it, right. Um, but it, you know, I, again, I he's, I mean, I I, I love that sport too. So I, I mean, I'm, I'm sort of interested to see what he's like as a player. So I guess I mean, to me, there's a there's a curiosity factor there for me. Trust me, we we have seen some of the greatest NBA players on the planet play mm-hmm. so, attempt to play softball. It's just, shocking. Yeah. Just, it's because shocking. You're, just because you're great at one sport does not mean yeah. that it transfers <laughs> over to baseball especially, slash softball. Especially baseball. Yes. Alan, yes. Alan yeah. Iverson was a hack job on the softball field. <laughs> yeah. As was Kevin Garnett. NKG, yeah. yeah. It's funny, right? I mean, it's just that the skill sets are so totally different. And, you know, these, like, speed explosion sports like football and a little bit like basketball and, and baseball doesn't have it as much in the main it's that that trunk twist with hitting plus hand eye coordination that is i mean it's really unique when you think about like the right. different things that most sports are asking you to do so it's and then you know catching the ball if you're not used to it or throwing the ball if you're not used to it why well, that's why like when Dion and Bo Jackson did that deal mm-hmm. hell even the guy what was it Brian something from Brian Richmond Jordan. Brian Jordan, Jordan yeah, yeah like when those guys did the two sport deal it was like mind blowing uh, super athletic in fact I know we want to talk to you about uh, Otani <clears throat> I guess Otani is more impressive because nobody's really done it at that level but what's more impressive a guy doing what Otani's done or like a Bo Jackson a multi-sport yeah mm. I don't know it's funny because you were Probably I mean Otani. I'm blown away like even before Otani that like somebody like Rick and Keel could get the yips say okay you know what i'm gonna try this as a position player yeah and like other guys have done it like even you know like there's a guy with the red sox named ron mayhay who wasn't great either way but like came up as an outfielder wasn't very good went down came back up as a pitcher i mean to be able to do that like that talent level is staggering it's like you know we all played with those kids when we were 12 and 13 that had that you know that were at that level, but to do it now. And then as far as Otani is concerned, it's pretty staggering. I mean, I, I would say that if you were to sit there and if he stay, if he's healthy, he's kind of blown up the MVP conversation. If you really, I mean, it depends on how you want to do it, but if you want to do it with like the actual best argument, if he's healthy every year, he really probably deserves to win the MVP every single year. Right. Mm-hmm. So let's let's talk about him. Uh, we've been talking about him the last few weeks just because of the offensive numbers that he's putting up, leading the league in homers now. Now, he went over for 4 last night. Kershaw kind of owns him, but Kershaw, I mean, he, he might win the Cy Young. Who knows? He's having a great year. But it's crazy, right? It's crazy. Um, but Otani's numbers are stupid, uh, not just offensively, but he's very good on the mound, as you know. And he's an unrestricted free agent. His GM came out yesterday and said, we're not interested in dealing him because, you know, we're in a wild card hunt. Give me a couple of teams. First of all, do you think they should trade him based on um, his numbers? And if, if, do you think that they're going to actually retain him? He's going to be a free agent. He can negotiate with multiple teams. And if he doesn't come back to the Angels, give me a couple of teams that make sense. Okay, so a couple of things. I guess the – the first thing that I'm still stuck on, even with the injury portion of his career, it's pretty amazing that the angels have had the two best players in the world since 2018 for some portion of that process and haven't made the playoffs. Haven't been over 500. Right. I mean, like that's incredible. I mean, that's again, where this sport is so much like if you could make a very easy case that if you were to just have an open draft tomorrow that the first two picks in an open major league draft for this season going into the season would have both been on the angels Mm -hmm. and like they and they still haven't made the playoffs as far as where he could end up i think the thing that's challenging is i i mean look in the end he's going to get his money because they usually get their money. But I, 
there aren't a lot of possible destinations. Like, I just don't know if he's looking to max it out. I just don't know that there's that many places that are capable of paying him the amount of money that he would want to get. Now, I'm assuming he's trying to get, you know, most money, most AAV, um, but, like, the usual suspects, I mean, the first place I go is the Dodgers. I mean, so you go Dodgers, Angels, I mean, are, I don't know, are the Rangers like a sneak attack destination? I I have a little bit of a hard time believing that, but, like, like I don't think the Cubs are, are in play here. Um, what about the Mets, guess, even though they, guess, they're paying everybody? I guess. I mean, I, I, I think you have to – I mean, I, I would err on this. I mean, if the Mets are, and then – I mean, I think you'd have to then say that the Padres probably are as well because – you know, Peter Seidler's th- shown that you know he doesn't he doesn't really seem to care in terms of just like you right. get an extension and you get an extension. So, I again, I don't trying to project like where this will end up. I don't I don't have a a clue. And then there's also where does the player want to be? Right. Right. Yeah, he might want to stay on the West Coast, like you said. Um, now, well, you and I were texting yesterday, and um, you said the National League stinks. When you compare yeah. it to, I think the Braves are very good. I don't know how good the Reds are. You know that division like the back of your hand. Yeah, uh, they have won ten straight. They won again last night. Now, yep. now they beat the Rockies. All right, so I'm not going to go too far. But um, the Cubs are three and a half back. They're hot. The They're Brewer, yeah. the Brewers are you know three games over five hundred. They're not that impressive to me. The Pirates stink now. Um, are the Reds? Are the Reds going to be a playoff team? And our producer Probably. has a crazy bet. Like he has a what? What are the odds on the bet, Drab, for the Reds to win the World to Series? Pay out ten grand. Yeah, he put fifty bucks to, for the Reds to win the World, World Series to win ten k. Uh, who doesn't like that well, sweat, John? <laughs> yeah, amen. Um, I mean, I don't think you're going to get your hands on your ten grand there, but who right. knows? I mean, I like. I mean, I'm not going to say you're absolutely not because I mean, I really do think. Like Bish, you're right. I mean, the the Braves are good. Um, you know, Diamondbacks and the Dodgers uh, are are good teams as well. But like, even you know, what I sent back to you is like, you know, for the Braves to really be good, they have to have Freed and Kyle Wright to be healthy and pumping. And um, if they're not, then they're vulnerable, just like any other team. I just don't. You know, it, it's weird. Somebody asked me the other day. Okay, so who would be your favorite? to win the world series. And like, by this point in the season, I, I'm spitting a team out really quick. Like normally I'm spitting a team out really quick. And I just, I don't have a strong, yeah. a strong feel on it right now. I mean, like somebody asked me it the other day and I went with a raise just because like I do the thing where I'm just like, you know what? I've seen him team with the best record. Um, but I don't feel a, a strong, yeah, because they're uh, not playing as well now as they no, were two weeks no, ago. No, no, yeah. nope, absolutely not. So, and if the Orioles had to play the Rays in a best of seven, I, I'd give the Orioles a, ch- a shot, hundred percent. Yes. yes, yeah, yeah, no, no doubt. Because there's just there's not, you know, overwhelming starting pitching, and so it can be, uh, you know, it it can be a little more of a crapshoot. But I, you know, there's. Yeah, there's a lot up in the air, but the, yeah, the National League, but it's like where the Cubs are. I don't think the Cubs intended to be division contenders this year, but because the Cardinals have been so bad, and that one's interesting because the roster construction isn't vastly different from the teams that we saw with the Cardinals the last two years. So I, I'm confused as to why it's taken place this season, but again, there's randomness. So, yeah, I mean, for the Cubs, it'll be a little why not us, and the Reds are dynamic and athletic, and it's funny, going into the year, what I really loved was the young pitching, and when healthy with, you know, Green and Ashcraft and Lodolo, um, they had some dudes, so we'll see, yeah. we'll see, I'm interested. Boog, it's always a pleasure talking to you, bro, um, have a good week, you, have a good weekend, yeah. yep. I wish I get a chance to see you guys. I didn't. Uh, I we snuck through there early in April, so right. um, we'll connect one of these times. Are oh, you yeah. Are you back in Washington the rest of the year? Or is that the only time? Right now, no. But okay. I think there there's probably a possibility because of uh, because of the O's. I think there's a chance that that I'll get back there. Okay. Yeah. Mm. All right. Let's stay in touch, man. Have a good rest of the week. Not because of the Nats. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not because. Yeah. Of the Nats. Right. I know. Yeah. Love you guys. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you, buddy. Time.
Boog Shambi covers the Cubs, and he's also the voice of ESPN Sunday Night Baseball.